Hello, 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 um, all Leos, Sun, Moon, Rising, Leos. This is your homework family reading for June 1st through the 15th for all Leos. Um, before I get into the cards and the astrology and everything, Spirit's telling me right off the bat when I, when I ask, because I ask what I'm doing, what signs I'm doing for what videos, more or less. Where, where they're directing me for, for at the time. And then, you know, when I get to the last one or two, I know I'm on the last one or two. So, Spirits directed me to the fact that I'm doing a Leo reading. Now, they could have given me a lion, because you're Leo the lion. They could have given me the Leo symbol. You know, they could have given me different triggers that would have brought me to Leo. But what they chose to give me says a lot about right where the base of the reading is. Because, again, this is from June 1st to the 15th. So, right here at the beginning of June, they are giving me, when I ask about it, they're giving me signs of royalty. I'm a Leo, so I know that I can sound pompous. I know I can sound brash and arrogant as shit. Okay, that's just part of the Leo's charm or uncharm, so to speak, that we have. I mean, we're very compassionate, but we're also... The reason that it can be hard on some people is because, according to astrology, Leo, the Leo sign is the ruler of the Zodiac. It is the king of the kingdom. And if Spirit's giving me royalty. This is saying right off the bat, Leos, it's one of two things. Either you've gotten acquired to having, I want to say things your way. And I wouldn't even say acquired a specific taste for things. You've gotten used to living life a specific way. And it seems like maybe it hasn't been that way lately. And the Leo within you is about done with that. I've gotten used to my life. It's supposed to be this kind of way. I'm, you know, I've gotten accustomed to this style of life. And uh, this, this is not going to work. So it's time to get your manifestation back and get it back to right. And get you back on that track. Or, or it's... The same kind of thing, but coming from a different direction. Leos, again, you're the king. You're the ruler of the kingdom. Like, that's why the Leo the lion is considered the, you know, the king of the jungle. If you don't like your life, it's time to change it. You're the freaking king, okay? You're the king. You're the royalty. And it comes down to realizing everything outside of you is your kingdom. And if the kingdom is not faring in a healthy way. It all comes down to the king. Is the king ruling it well? Maybe it's time to take a step back and really view how we as Leos are ruling our kingdom. Because maybe we've gotten comfortable with things that just no longer serve us. And I feel like on, on Leos are also connected to the heart. It's ruled by the heart. Um, as well, as well as the sun. It's meant to illuminate. That's what the Leo is. It's ruled by the sun. It's meant to illuminate. And it's also the heart chakra. But what I'm feeling is, is the heart chakra is burdened by what it sees. It looks out and it's like, there's so much work to be done. And you know what? There is. There really is. But from a Leo standpoint, this is what we do. So, put on your armor and get to work. It's time to start fixing these things and start making, changing the rules is what I was just told. It's time to start changing the rules of what's going on within those relationships. And that is going to hit the astrology. But, like I said, the Leo is the ruler of the Zodiac. It's the ruler of the kingdom. So, the kingdom is only as good as its ruler, and you need to maybe take some look at some areas that you've been ignoring for a hot minute, or a couple years, and skeletons in the closet, and 
clean it all up. And when I hit the astrology, you're going to understand. Because I definitely feel like the burdens as you're looking out, it's just there's too much to have to do, but you can do it. And you're being called to attention to do it and get, get it right. And it's going to make sense as soon as I hit the astrology. Okay, we have a new moon coming in on the 3rd in Gemini. Then on the 8th, we have Venus moving into Gemini. Now, from a universal standpoint of Leo in astrology, that's your 11th house. That is speaking directly to your community, your large groups, your friends, your wishes, your memberships, your hopes, your goals, your ambitions, your uh, liberty, your self-realization, your outside-of-you interests. And you've got the new moon taking place there. So there's something definitely to release there that's not serving you anymore. There's brand new goals and directions to start setting there. And Venus going into that with the sun, which is your ruler, and Gemini is making you illuminate, bringing a shine to you, but also showing you very much the Jekyll and Hyde. And when I say Jekyll and Hyde, I don't necessarily mean soul and ego. Uh, what I mean is on a human's Jekyll and Hyde point of view. And that's where we're being humane or not. Where, where are you choosing to be humane and do the right things? And where are you choosing not to be humane versus full on passion, action, aggression? Emotions are there. You have your emotions. And they run out of control. They they go gloriously happy when you're incredibly happy. And yay, and all fooey, ooey, gooey, fooey, and chewy. You know, all yay when you, get, when you fall in love. And when you've been betrayed, they go into hatefulness and anger. You know, when you've been lied to and hurt. Emotions are emotions. They have their feel. They have their reasons for feeling the way they do. And it's not even under, important that you understand it. It is a passionate energy. There is a difference. Jekyll and Hyde, which is the twins, which is Gemini, is all of that passion energy for the good or bad. And then what do you choose to do with it, humane or not? Masculine, feminine. You're taking both sides and you're putting them together and then seeing what you get. That is what the Gemini sign is. And the sun is in it right now, illuminating all of that passion, all of that emotions. Venus is moving in. You've got the new moon taking place. Like I said, the third and the eighth. The third is the new moon in Gemini. The eighth, Venus moves in. And it's in that outer community, especially with all your hopes, dreams, goals, wishes, ambitions, you know, your memberships. It's everything around you outside. And what isn't serving you? And when you look at it, if you don't want to be part of it, why the fuck are you still part of it? I mean, that's a big part of what you're looking at. If you're looking at something that you just don't want to be a part of and you're being stuck with it, I understand if it's a job and you kind of can't help it and, and whatnot, but you also don't have to stay and be friends with everybody. You can just get your job done and do what you have to do until you can move on into something you do enjoy. You know, maybe there's certain things that are directing you in certain ways. And some things are out of your control. But the things that are in your control and you can choose to not be a part of, why the hell do you stay a part of it if you don't want to be? Then you also have Mercury moving into Cancer, closer to Mars, and closer to the North Node. And for Leo, that's the 12th house. It seems like we just can't get away from the 12th house. I mean, it's like we can't get away from our secrets, our denials, our dormant energy. Everything that we're trying to hide from ourselves is just going, nope, screw you, I'm coming out, and you're going to learn to deal with me, and you're going to fix me and heal me, and ha. And really, that's what is going on. This is what I'm talking about. Leo's with Mercury being in that universal 12th house, which is your cancer sign, this is saying, I'm at the end of a season. I'm at the end of a cycle. And you either choose now to start a new cycle by learning everything that I have to teach you from this 12th house and heal it. 
or continue to live, live the same life you've always lived because it will never change. Because when when that north node moves in to the next sign, it will be changing. You're going, it, it's saying it's it's the twelfth house, but it's going the way that it works. It goes backwards instead of forward, and it just left who we were. We were given the rebirth, but then it goes right back into the 12th house and starts working. It's all the way back to a rebirth. So it's going, you were rebirthed, but this is what you got wrong. Let me start correcting that right now and work our way back. This is saying that 12th house is some secrets, some denials. It's our subconscious self, our hidden self, our unconscious karmic debts. It is self-deception. It is... um. Our, our personal undoing, you know, it's also where prison, government, um, office, suicide, murder, kidnapping, grief, sorrow, secrets, funerals all take part in that universal 12th house. And you've got Mercury here, the North Node here, and Mars here talking about what it is, what you need to learn to be in service of yourself, to not have this go against you to heal. So you're getting a very important wake-up call, which is bringing you back into illumination, more or less. Bringing you back into illumination and just spiritual growth. But it seems, it's, it feels like a lot of the whole of the dark night of soul. Like you've been going through a lot of dark night of soul and... And that's to get you back on the right path. Not that you wasn't on the right path, but it's to get you where they want to get you. Spirit. To get yourself back into your true authenticity. No holds bar. I'm not taking this shit anymore. We're changing. And don't forget, you also have on the 21st, Neptune is going retrograde in Pisces. But that for us is... <laughs> That's the 8th house. That is the relationship zone. That is the responsibilities within the relationship. It is the joint efforts, joint resources. It is child care, child support. It is um, child neglect, personal neglect, um, relationship neglect. It's the rules that make the relationship run. And where are those rules wrong? Because they got to shift. That's what it's coming down to. Really, eyes open to the whole outer community, acknowledging who and what you are, learning how to come back into your true Leo self, and rule the damn kingdom, but see what's not working. Where where, where did this shit manage to get past me? And we're going to stop it right now. I am being given first off as we enter June 1st through the 15th, the platform is the Six of Wands. I'm making sure I have it high enough. And this is a very good thing. It's saying you're going through a little bit of a rough patch, you know, but that we're coming out victorious. The Warrior King returns triumphant. It's victory. And it's Jupiter and Leo. So this is you coming home to you. This is you getting that authenticity back. Stepping back into your inner lion or lioness and learning how to bring that out of you right here at the beginning of June. Now, I'm holding them wrong. What else do you have for the platform? Judgment. This is um, rebirthing, a resurrection. What did I just say? A renewal. It's a completion of a cycle, but it's also very important news. It's also an a reckoning of a critical decision. This is Scorpio in our life. So, whether it's Scorpio in general, symbolically of life, death, rebirth, or actually a Scorpio that's coming in and helping make the judgment and putting it into balance and helping set it right, but... It's saying that you're returning to yourself and the proper judgment is coming in. So it's moving in your benefit. So this is a very good Leos. The Queen of Pentacles 
and the Queen of Cups. And this is for your platform. I'll move to the next deck in a second. So, the Queen of Pentacles is, it's Mother Earth. But this is also, in this deck, it's Lord Shiva. So, this is death and rebirth. So, this is where the death starts for the rebirthing. Where you get grounded and you get re-spiritual again. This is, you know, the rebirthing into the proper wisdom and bringing fire out of Earth. This is revolution. Okay? Within yourself and within your life. Bringing that to the Queen of Cups. Which I'm being given actual... Green and yellows, which is speaking about our psychic energy. It's growth within our psychic energy. It's growth within ourselves. But this is water on water. And the, the, what you're hearing me say is this is a black and white card. But when spirit speaks to me, they illuminate things in different colors. And that's a way of how I communicate. This is creativity. This is sensitive energy. She is, you know, she is a watery mind stream that is forever flowing. See how it's just coming right on out of her head? She's, the waters flow through her. Naturally. Um, she's very intuitive. But she's also destructive. Because water isn't just healing. It's also destructive. I mean, it can be both. And I feel like this is definitely a triumphant beginning. But there is definitely destruction happening. That's making that happen. And it makes sense. You have a new moon right there at the third. Okay? So, I mean, it makes sense that there's some major shifts and changes and destruction happening so that the new moon can start to rebirth it correctly. Don't forget, you've got eclipse season coming in in July, you know, and you also have, what is it, the Lion's Gate coming in right after that in August? I mean, the energy is rising and rising and pushing so much out. So, and and it's going to be more intense the deeper into the summer we get, I'm telling you now. The sun, you are ruled by the sun. It's time to shine. It's time to illuminate. It's time to let your crown go wild. <laughs> to let your crown go wild and follow it and, and illuminate and show what you are made of. You're the king, for crying out loud. You, you've got the royalty in the background. Use it. Illuminate what you already know and show what you know. Like I said, sometimes the rules and the sometimes the rules have to change. But sometimes somebody's gotta be willing to make them change and to step up and say, That's not gonna happen anymore. And us Leos are good at that. So it's it's time for that forward to come forward. And what was I just saying, Leo? Be the king that you are. Rule the kingdom the way that you know it needs to be ruled. Use the Gemini energy that you're receiving from the sun while it's in that 11th house where your community is, where your hopes, your goals, your dreams, your wishes are illuminating you. You have Venus there showing you the sensitivity of what's right and what's wrong. <clears throat> what is the proper humane way of doing it? What is not? <clears throat> what is the proper passion to understand what is why people act the way they do? Be the ruler that only you can be. Be the ruler that you desire to see. Set, set, set the fucking example. You might look out and see where it's a little bit of an uphill battle and it might seem difficult. But if you want it to change, it's got to start with you. And it's basically what I'm getting from all of this. I am not counting that. All right, please. Never mind. I was gonna write, ask for a high uh, for a high vibrational card, and then they popped one out at me. This is. I can't really tell if this is Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, but it is the Ten of Cups. This is speaking to us of. Mars and Pisces. This is not our strongest suit. This isn't our strongest suit. It is short-lived happiness. So, don't get too bold and don't overstep your 
your happiness and, and, and stroke your own ego too much. You might be stroking it a little too prematurely is what this is. There's still much work to be done is what I feel. Like, you are starting to make the direction. You are coming into your authentic self. You do feel good about that, and that's a glorious thing. That is a growth spurt, and that's exactly what it is, a growth spurt, returning to self again. Re reclaiming some of that Leo energy that you lost somewhere along the way, but there's still a lot to do. So, you know, don't overdo it. The star card, though, this this means that there's definitely hope. There's hope coming in. This is Aquarius, but this is also saying this is the righteous one in general. It is um our soul's desire, but when I look at it from the Hebrew point of view, because that's what these cards are. They bring me a lot of stuff in Hebrew. Hebrew, the best way of explaining the star card is it's the hook. Like the fishing hook. Send your fishing hook out there with the intent of getting exactly what you want. Don't don't send that fishing. Don't manifest it out there with, I might get a good fish. No, I'm throwing it into the waters where I know I'm going to get the biggest damn fish possible, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, a happy king in my in my castle, and I'm going to be full, and I'm going to sit back and relax, and everything's going to be good. What are you trying to hook? Is what this is about. Send your hook out properly. You've got everything going for you, but make sure that you're sending your hook out properly. Make sure you're sending out for the star you want, not just the one you can get. Okay? And then you have the Prince of Wands coming in. This is speaking to you of enthusiasm. This is strength. This is um, swiftness within strength. So this is action that is quick. You want to make sure that you're staying focused and you're putting it out there properly, but, you know, you're not losing sight of that strength. This is um, your inner solar fires. This is going to be your solar plexus and believing in yourself. This is also intellect within the storm. It's a freaking, it's the lion again, I mean, more or less. It's you riding your own chariot. This is what this is. This is you coming into your power, riding your chariot. Enthusiasm and drive. This couldn't be more of Leo energy. So it's coming into your power, but know your power. Don't let it run you and get a little too cocky with it because you're being given the higher fund. And this is saying, make sure that you're also going inward. This is make sure that you're sticking with your connection to the spiritual path. This is Taurus on the board now. This is the spiritual and mundane both come together as one. But in Hebrew, it's the nail. Now, the nail is what connects the connection. If you want this, which is you on your chariot, gloriously coming through your fire to be all in your power you need to stay connected with your hierophant you need to stay connected with that energy of the of the oneness and the wisdom that it is going to bring you so that it doesn't set you in any incorrect directions you've got to stay with the true oneness and the true depth of understanding as you're doing this because this card actually does not have a name this is like the special card that comes with the deck. But for me, this means you are creating your reality. You are creating your reality. So make sure that you are aware that your manifestation is completely on you. And you can create it however you see fit. So are you creating it healthy? You're being given every reason to believe and to know that you can. But you also have to stay the course. All right, is there anything left that Leos need to hear? Well, that was quick and easy. <laughs> what did I just say? Steadiness. It's funny when it comes up like that. I'm like, I just said that. Um, things seem to be moving slowly. But use, but use this time to your advantage to gather your resources, to rebuild your energy. You are going to need them. Yeah. 
we got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of changing to do. A lot of power to come into. Take care of yourself. You've got to stay connected with that Hierophant, with the oneness. But you've also got to take care of you and just love you. So, take that time you need to keep you on that right path. Confident is the last one. Confident is you confuse confidence with ego. There is no shame in confidence. It's, sorry, there is no shame in confidence. It's about knowing who you are and what you want and what's most important. Having the courage to stand up and in your power. That is not ego. That is confidence. I love you guys. And I'll see you for the second half of June. And if you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. And if you want your own personal readings, there will be a link below that you'll be able to find so that you can book your own appointments. Bye.